First things first, Long. how are you? I'm doing good. Yeah, glad to be here. It's very good to hear. So before we talk about the music and the new album, I'd like to jump back to the beginning a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, when this passion for music started, and obviously you're very young, how did that kind of manifest itself initially? Was it just searching out music? Was it instantly looking towards instruments? How did you kind of develop that initial love for music? Mm. It's hard to know like how you necessarily came to love something. You just kind of do. And so for me, my cousin showed me GarageBand and I was like 10. And that was the first time I remember being introduced to like the making of music. Mm. And uh, it just instantly clicked for me. I was like, oh, this is, this makes sense. And uh, I just got obsessed with like editing stuff with uh, Apple's programs that they have like iMovie and you know, Garage Band and all that stuff, and um, it just made sense to me, like how to edit with software, and so my love for making music kind of just came from the obsession of that. Like, a lot of my friends played video games, and like that was my video game is mm. Garage Band. So it's a hobby, also the thing that I love, also my downtime. So, yeah. What were the first attempts like? What What were you trying to make? <sighs> oh, I don't know. I mean. <laughs> I don't know the uh, depths of my musical knowledge and a 10-year-old has. Um, <laughs> I, I used uh, a lot of the Apple loops that they have provided. So I'm one of those people that you can play like half a second of one of the sounds and I know what it is because okay. you know, I've just heard them that many times, um, all the like Apple stock songs. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I grew up in middle school like listening to a lot of like EDM and electronic music so that's probably some sort of production aspect but then at the beginning of high school I got into like indie pop and rock and which is kind of the world I've stayed in. Were you f was, was there a moment where you kind of figured things out or w where it led you to okay now I'm able to make at least something that I find decent and, and I'm willing to share with people? Yeah I um, I don't know I mean I'm still figuring things out, like I'm still really young and I didn't think it would happen this quickly. Mm. Um, Fuzzy Brain was really my first attempt, I mean I put other stuff on SoundCloud before but not like, there's just this side of the internet where it's just songs just exist and I was one of those artists, so, like I didn't do anything, I just put it out, you know? And Fuzzy Brain was my first attempt of like, okay I think this is an album that sounds good. Um, and I put it out and then it kind of took off. So it was immediately well received, which is awesome. Sure. But I was 18, so. Um, <laughs> so no yeah, intention at that point. I'm still figuring it out, yeah. Right. I mean, I've kind of had to figure it out after the fact, which is good, good, but good issue. You are very much, I suppose, a, a product then of the, the internet generation, the, mm. the digital generation. What, how did you kind of, hone your craft and was it through YouTube and through just looking up tutorials and, and kind of figuring out what what your own creative process was yeah yeah I mean I I grew up in a small town in Texas where there was no art scene around me and so I think finding my own individual sound just came from existing in that space where like I didn't have any influence other than what I liked and so I got to curate my own sound and kind of accidentally make my own thing um, you know because a lot of people grow up and there's other kids in their class sure. that want to be in a band and then you all kind of grow up and like the same stuff but uh, I didn't have that influence at all I just found stuff on YouTube and learned what I wanted to learn and um, kind of shaped my sound um, without any context right C can you share one thing that you've learned in those initial years about kind of what you like about making music or where, where your mind is going towards, where you're gravitating towards? Sure, I mean, I'm, I'm always just wanting to have fun and I know how cliche that sounds, but if anybody ever asks me for advice or something, I'm like, you know, just have fun with what you're doing and um, have that be the goal at least. Like you have to be aware of the other things. Like you, you have to be aware that you're running a business whenever you're <laughs> a musician and stuff, but have fun and, and make sure that's definitely part of the equation. And so for me, like, I really love to learn more and how to mix better and figure out how other people are doing things and knowing how records are made and what gear they used on the album. Um, but thankfully that comes really naturally to me. It's just 
completely what I care about. So. And you, you raise an interesting point. So when Fuzzy Brain did get the attention it did, uh, what was that? Was there a shift for you? And I, I suppose not in terms of mindset, because you say, well, it's, it's all about having fun. But mm. there, there has to be some kind of shift, because now all of a sudden uh, it's a way to make a living. Oh, for sure. No, yeah. I mean, I was, I was a freshman in college when I released Fuzzy Brain, and then by the end of the year, I dropped out of college okay. and um, was doing music full time um, and figuring out what that meant, you know, in, in the process. But uh, yeah, there's definitely a shift and like a sense of pressure, but it didn't really get to me because I think for a lot of people, it seems when they make their first record, maybe there's like other people involved and they're unsure of like what the next step was. But I think it gave me a sense of confidence that the first thing that I made, mm. I made alone and it was received well. And so I didn't really have that pressure of like, is my next thing going to be liked? Because I just thought, well, like, if people like this, then my next album will definitely be better because I made it when I was 18. So, yeah, I just kind of progressed. But that's also interesting because I... Uh did read that it's pretty much a very insular process, the creative one, uh, for you. So, so mm -hmm. is it like a deep dive you do? Or do you kind of lock yourself away in your room or uh, studio and yeah. then just, just go, <laughs> don't well, come I, out for um, a couple of weeks? I, honestly, probably more than I even realized. Mm -hmm. Like, I just got married over a year ago. Okay. And um, now having another person living with me, I see how much... I go away to the studio. I guess before I didn't realize how much I locked myself in the room. Um, but yeah, it's I make my music completely alone. Like nobody else records any part of it. Um, I produce it and record it all myself in my bedroom. And it was the same for this next record as well. But is that kind of out of necessity of, or as you mentioned, mm. that you, you kind of, uh, you did it the first time and now you kind of feel like, okay, people enjoy what I do by myself, so fair enough. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of weird because like, I think it's not necessarily a necessity, mm. but I think for Dayglow, it is. Okay. Like I think for this project to exist the way that it does and for it to be as sincere as possible, I think it is necessary that I'm the only person working on it. I just think it's so ingrained as part of the story of what it is. And um, yeah, I think in this context, I'd, I don't think I could collaborate with anyone on making a Dayglow record. Um, but me as like a creative person, that's my dream is to collaborate with other people okay. and have a studio and have them come to me and you know record some music. I think that'd be really fun. But, but I think for Dayglow specifically, okay. it's like it, it's a thing that I do alone. But also, I should mention, you're still young, so you have uh, plenty of time to do all kinds of things. I sure hope so, yeah. <laughs> um, but with that in mind, then, do you, w when kind of a new album cycle starts, and then I believe, uh, I don't want to get into kind of the, the COVID years too much, because I, I'm so sick of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but but th the previous record was kind of more, as I, uh, I read, kind of... Uh, the soundtrack to an unreleased sitcom, the mm -hmm. kind of that idea. Mm. So when you started on this new one, do you have kind of a, an idea of what you want to make? Do you kind of pre do pre-production in that sense that you kind of sure. sense, okay? Yeah, I guess it's less of a narrative approach than Harmony House was, okay. um, but definitely like with People in Motion, um, I now have a lot of touring in my system and I know what it's like to tour mm. and um, I've gotten to see what Dayglow fans are like and what a Dayglow show feels like. And so People in Motion is my first record, like having that context, which is really important, I think, as a band or uh, as an artist, like to know what your shows are like, because then that's the whole point, you know? So for People in Motion, it's my first record seeing all of that, which kind of feels like the first record in general, because mm. now I know what this whole thing is. Um, so it was really helpful for me to be on the road and it's been really fun. And um, yeah, it's like an album now knowing that context and making dance music, you know? But that's an interesting point as well because especially with the years that we've had, uh, you see a lot of numbers on screen and you've done quite well uh, in terms of social media likes and all that stuff. But it, it, it's different when you see the people right in front of you, right? 
For sure, yeah. I think that's success to me. It's like if people buy tickets to your show and like want to show their friends this show, um, that's the whole point to me, you know, because I would rather not have an Instagram if I could sell tickets, you know, like I, I think that'd be the dream. Um, and I think there's people who have, you know, a hundred times more Instagram followers than they could sell tickets. And that's just weird to me. You know, I think if I can create a fan base and a culture around Dayglow where it's about the live music and the music itself, then that'd be awesome. And it's kind of starting to happen, which is amazing. So, um, yeah. Is, is that a difficult thing then to, to not, because it feels like, and this is from my perspective as, as a journalist, but it feels like a lot of the business is heading that way with mm -hmm. more likes and more, more clicks and all that stuff. So is it difficult to kind of still do your own thing while, while this industry is shouting at you from the side? Yeah, I mean, it is difficult in some ways. I think, I think the way that I have looked at it, and I could be totally like naive and I'm young and like I don't really completely look at the analytics on things, I do a little bit. Um, but it just seems like that's a brand new industry, almost as Ooh, if it's sure. a different thing entirely. Like I think there used to be an entire, I guess maybe there still is an entire industry for like people who write jingles, <laughs> you know? And so like there was a world where people did that and like that's a business and I think making music for TikTok is its own business mm. and I think that is different than the world of like a touring musician and a person that puts on shows sure. the same way that like I don't know a musical or like a Broadway is like a show in and of itself I hope I could kind of do that it's like this is a day glow show and I, I think that's just a different side of the music industry is uh, the streaming stuff and it's becoming so big that it's like there's a lot of money that people can make doing <laughs> sure, it but sure. um, just for me personally I'm not as concerned about that side of things as like getting people to come to my show fair enough so moving on to the the album then people in motion because it is a line in uh, a radio we are mm -hmm. all just people in motion so mm -hmm. that song in particular where, where, what was the origins of that song yeah so there's you know that song video killed the radio star sure. it's kind of like the alternative of that song so where video killed the radio star is talking about technology advancing and um, now that we have like an overload of content which is funny because it's like a song from the 80s and like we've gone so much farther than what they probably could have even imagined um, my song radio is kind of being nostalgic for a time where like there wasn't so much like before Pandora's box was opened and right. like um, you know there was that sense of like innocence in a way where there wasn't so much to choose from. And um, yeah, I mean, People in Motion is a way of describing dancing because okay. it's like a dance album, but it also goes a lot farther and deeper um, than that. And I think in radio, I unpack that a little bit and just talking about how just too, we have too much, you know? And I, I just feel nostalgic for a time where, you know, music was the goal, you know, and not views or something. Yeah, there, there's this phrase I've, I've been kind of running through my head uh, a lot the last years, but it's uh, paralysis through analysis, where, where there's so much and you can mm. just focus on everything and everything, and it just, wow. you end up doing nothing in a way. Yeah, oh, it's straight up. I've never heard that. That's a, that's a good it, it, thing. It's from yeah. a football show, but okay. <laughs> anyways. Yeah. Uh, but, but that is very true, at least for me as well, where, as you mentioned, there's so many choices, and, and mm. so, if we equate this to music then, there's so many ways to fill in a song or so many ways to, to and especially because you do everything yourself, you can, you can literally do uh, one song a hundred different ways. Mm. So what, what is your decision process like? Yeah, um, I just want to make things feel like really honest and um, sincere. And so my recording process, I usually keep it as genuine as possible i think there's a magic in like the timing of writing a song and i think although once you release a song it doesn't really have a time because it just exists forever i think when recording a song it really matters what kind of headspace you're in and what mm -hmm. season of life you're in and like the 
time of day you record it even. And so um, since I have my studio at home, like there's a certain time where I feel like it's right to record this part of this song. I'll do it and then just like not record it again. So a lot of people in motion, there's like vocal takes of where I'm singing and like I could have probably sang it better, mm. um, but I just left it because I think it made it feel the most sincere that it could, um, if that makes sense. Sure, and then is, is that kind of the, the sincerity, the, the, the authenticity, that's kind of the, the, the foundation then, and, and whatever you, sonic, the sonic landscape which, which falls on top, that, that's, that can change, I suppose. Sure, yeah, yeah, definitely so. When you, because whenever I listen to these uh, kind of synth-inspired music and, and these sounds, do you, is that something you really delve into? I mean, you kind of, I think you do, but it, as you mentioned, every sound and... Yeah. So do you delve into a new instrument when you do a new album and just... Yeah, on People in Motion, I kind of let loose uh, and added a lot of fun stuff. Okay. Like, I think the past two records, I limited myself in trying to reference an era or something or thinking like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to perform this live. And with People Motion, I kind of let that go and try to make the most imaginative, big sounding album that I could, um, while still feeling like I made it myself. Like, I, I think it sounds a lot more produced, um, mm. and that's just from me getting better at producing. I didn't work with a producer or something. Um, <laughs> I think people will still be able to see, like, I made it myself. And I think that'll be cool because, you know, it sounds like pop. Um, but. As far as like instruments and layers and stuff, I'm a huge nerd okay. about um, gear and vintage stuff. So there's a lot of analog synths over the album. Um, yeah. Did you notice your your uh, mind hovering towards a certain sound or towards a certain synth, uh, maybe more fuzzy or maybe more bright? Or yeah. Whatever the case maybe. I don't know. I, I love the feeling of like when a synth feels like it's its own little robot or like an alien or something as if it's like kind of alive in a way and like organic it's a it's a textural thing that's kind of hard to describe sure. um but i i mean this is super nerdy but i have a uh, i have this thing called like a euro rack system which is essentially like something you build yourself and you get these okay. modules and um combine each one and so you can build your own synth essentially and um, I have one that I've been working on is all over the record and kind of is the base of a lot of okay. songs. And it kind of is like a metronome type of thing um, that you can hear throughout the record. Just lots of like bleeps and bloops are <laughs> mostly coming from uh, that, just like rhythmic stuff. Okay. And so it kind of set the base for a lot of the rhythm parts of uh, the songs. Oh, but that's cool. And I, I do like hearing about kind of those, those intricacies of making mm -hmm. kind of the textures of a, of a yeah. song. Um, finally, I, w I would like to talk about Deep End because I, I think that's one of the central songs on the album. Uh, so, yeah. so when you started with that song, what were you thinking of? Yeah, so Deep End was one of the first songs I made for the record. Okay. And I was messing with this new synth that I had just gotten. And I wasn't like really trying to make a song. I had just finished Harmony House. And um, I was just kind of relaxing, and uh, I made the core structure of like Deep End's chorus um, with like the synth sounds and everything, and it just sounded really fun. And I, I couldn't think of like what I was referencing necessarily. It felt like its own thing entirely, um, but it also felt familiar and like mm -hmm. felt like a day glow song. And so I kind of just unpacked that and tried to let go of any preconceived idea of like what my next album was supposed to be like and it kind of set the tone of this like fun imaginative um, landscape um, but the song lyrically it's kind of about that just like letting go and um, right. having confidence in uh, the unknown you know this m might be a little bit philosophical then but what gives you that confidence to let go you know I think I think you just have to like surround yourself with good people and um, I, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm a young person and I'm still figuring life out and how things work. Um, but I don't know, I think it's just really good to, um, to, yeah, surround yourself with good people and take care of yourself as 
simple as it sounds. There's just these kind of things that can feel so like simple, you know, like be healthy, but it's just, it's important to like, you know, have the self-awareness and conscious behavior to just check in on yourself and have fun. You know? Right. Well, one last thing then, because you, you mentioned that having fun, but I imagine there is some ambition in, in the sense you do want your music to reach as many people uh, oh, as possible, Oh, for sure. Right? No, I'm, I'm the like textbook definition of a workaholic okay. and a perfectionist. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I think the having fun part is definitely a um, decided action. It's not the thing that comes naturally. I get pretty stressed. Um, but yeah, it's like life is short. So, uh, <laughs> what, what do you, the last thing then, what, what, what do you do outside of music to clear your mind or just, just to kind of, yeah. Um, I mean, I love like just low key hanging out with people. Okay. Like, like I have good friends around me, like a small group of good friends and, uh, I love to spend time outside, just relax. Um, yeah, I love cooking, eating good food, but, uh, I'm an introvert. So like, I like Peace small and groups of people and yeah. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Sloan, thank you so much for taking yeah, the time. Yeah, thank, thank, thank you. Thank you so much.